Welcome everyone back to Freelancer Discovery and today we have Bannon with me, the uh, Ryland military second in charge. As I mentioned on my previous video when I talked about the end of the Gallic War, um, I'm gonna have him on the show. So uh, right now we are live so you can submit questions along while uh, he's preparing right now for 10 minutes and I, I will take the questions although I have to pick them up you know I can't just ask anything but um, I'll watch uh, check your questions out and if, if I think it fits in the interview I'll get him uh, ask him so feel free to uh, submit questions so this is a new because the thing is I usually do that if I don't have enough questions I'm like okay I need a live audience so you, you guys can participate so uh, let me him let me get him into voice. Let me take a sip of this juicy Capri Sun. I've only mean questions. Well, just go ask. Doesn't matter. Just ask. All right. So, Banner, welcome to the show, dude. Yeah, thanks for having me. <laughs> Second in charge of Rhino Military, right? Uh, for, long, for how long have you been part, actually, of the Rhine military? Um, I joined the uh, Rheinwehr in December, early December last year. Yeah, yeah. Um, and I think by end of January, I had joined the HV um, with Felipe, and then obviously when Felipe um, left, yeah, yeah. Slash took some time himself. Um, Exa and Tim took over as 1 and 2 IC, and I've sort of been running the background show. Mm. So Exo, uh, this is not... Like you said before, this is not EXO, right? Which, which X, X is? Um, yeah, EXE. E -E, EXE, yeah. yeah. EXE, yeah. Okay, so, okay, so let me get let me get to the first question. So, so I, I told you there are like three basic questions, which just is like one of those questions that uh, needs a lot of exp explanation and shit yeah right and then then we'll have a couple surprise questions from the audience so i'll go with uh i, I know you're not uh the leader of <laughs> ryan Mayer, but like i'm sure you know still as, as much as x uh exe so what is your faction about and with what idea in mind you build it upon i mean obviously yeah. There was no Rhineland military official factions, so I guess you <laughs> took over. Yeah. Yeah, okay, I mean, we sort, of, we, we sort of had in many, obviously, in many ways, we had the advantage that being a house, yeah. Um, yeah. there's always a great deal of um, people who are going to be joining, people who are always going to have an interest to it. So most of what we do, obviously, in roleplay, what we represent is the military wing yeah. of the Rhinelandic state. We're not going to say the word empire yet. Right. <laughs> <laughs> but yes. basically, I mean, in terms of what we do, if we protect Rhineland, we fight its wars and we meddle a lot more in its politics than we should. Yep. Um, in terms of what we actually try to achieve sort of out of character for it, most of it is we want people to be able to log, have a good time and generally do stuff. Um, one of the great things about the Rhineland military is we do have the law enforcement side of it. Yeah. Um, so there's always something to do in terms of you know smuggling control and stuff like that. You've always got an infinite number of noobs who don't know which slaves are not cool. Sure, sure, sure. So there's always a lot to do in that way and that's mostly what we try and focus on is, is engagement, pews, um, stuff like that. Obviously there is always role play in it. Um, people yeah. who have been paying attention may have noticed things like Rhinex popping up, which is obviously the military research wing. Um, yeah, so that kind of summarizes what we're doing, really. Obviously, in terms of what's actually currently going in in-game. Um, yeah, yeah. We are mostly obviously focused on the Kusari War, which currently we have a sort of a, a truce with both GMG and um, Kusari, hoping to um, bring an end to that war, obviously, hoping to get everyone what they wanted. Yeah, I, I, I was actually going to ask about that. Like, um, you may have seen what Durandal wrote on uh, Discovery GC. Um, what was it channel the official discord or whatever he said that official factions do not uh impact the npc lore right he said something about that so i'm wondering you guys have been doing the truce how far are you guys willing to go like are you all in agreement that this is ridiculous that the war shouldn't happen or or is it just you know temporary truce or something 
I think, like, like in anything in politics, obviously, the yeah. role play side of it is almost in many ways like real politics. People are trying to get their own up, people are being difficult, people want their faction to gain something. Yeah. Um, so I think we're, we're quite serious about it, but um, obviously, the, the thing about what Justin said, it's yeah. kind of an interesting thing, the way we handle storytelling in the game uh, overall, because True. things that you can do in game yeah. can exist but not become canon. Yes. Um, so the way so. it was explained to us is the way the truce currently works is it will become canon if a piece is signed and that piece is accepted by the devs. Except, I think that's the key word, accepted by the devs. So as long as they agree, it's okay. And uh, if yeah, they obviously, really... I mean, when as a faction, sort of other faction rep or the faction leader, yep. um, one of the things we obviously don't want to be doing is just saying we're going to do this, fuck the devs. True, true. Um, I get what you mean. Entire process of doing this is we've been sitting there talking with Death Unfeely in particular, yeah. um, Zalrock and so on about how we would implement it, whether it's acceptable. Um, their sort of general attitude that they've given us is that we need to work it out in roleplay, and if the roleplay is there, then they have no issue of accepting it. Um, yeah. So that's been our approach, and then the rest has really been focused around making sure the KNF slash Kusari slash GMG versus Rhineland can also come to an agreement. Obviously, there's a lot of things. Everyone wants everything. Everyone wants Saigon. Yeah, I get what you mean. Yeah, but in terms of uh, in terms of how serious we are, I think we're we're very serious. I mean, partly because there was a very clear out of character um, feeling, not just in the the Rheinwehr, but also in the KNF before I, Christmas when we did the vote. Yeah, that yeah. we didn't necessarily want to continue a war, but nobody was overly interested in. True, true, true. Exactly, and then with slight dying of activity, we were still doing events, but it was getting increasingly difficult to get, especially with GMG and Kusari on in numbers enough to make that worthwhile. Yeah. Um, and in terms of internal politics for Rhineland, obviously we have plans that don't involve being in constant war with Kusari. Um, so we're very much looking to put an end to the war um, and hopefully get an interesting piece. Um, I can't really talk about too many intricate details because not yeah, all of them yes. <laughs> but uh, we, we do have plans hopefully we'll give a lot of corporations and factions within both Rhineland and Kusari a lot of roleplay focused stuff to do throughout the Sigmas which we're really looking forward to yep so speaking of Sigmas since you signed the uh, truce so there there won't be an expansion into Sigmas from Rhineland or <laughs> <laughs> well, the, the term expansion might be yeah. a touch difficult. Yeah. Um, obviously, throughout this entire process, one of the things that's been really interesting has been that that no point is anyone happy to give up anything in the Sigmas. Yeah. Um, the hope for us for 21 is, a, is actually a mutual agreement where everyone will have an amount of influence, sort of um, STC trade councils type thing where it's not entirely subject to other people. Yeah. Um, to allow us to interplay with that and have relationships between, for example, Samura and Kishiru, uh, sorry, uh, GMG and Samura and so on, but normally would not interact in a particularly positive way and to give them that opportunity. But I wouldn't say Rhineland isn't looking for the Sigmas. As far as Rhineland law is concerned, certainly as far as the military is concerned, the Sigmas are rightfully ours and have been since before the 80 year war. <laughs> I see. It's I just see. a question of to which extent we can enforce that. True, true, um, true. Which to some extent has been what this war has been about. Obviously, we wanted with what one of four Terran planets in Sirius, mm -hmm. obviously wanted Saigon. Yep. Um, it's sort of lessened now, but one of the big plot points the devs used to be pushing for Rhineland was we needed the living from the living space for mm -hmm. our people. Mm -hmm. um, Rhineland is a massively overpopulated country with a very limited amount of real estate available. And of course, with Nuremberg falling oh. apart. Yeah, yeah, I see. Obviously, um, 15, um, you may see in Rhineland communications quite a lot the word Lüneburg. Yeah. Um, we basically consider that to be a core territory of Rhineland and not even remotely part of the Sigmas. Um, 13 is obviously one of those non-questions that nobody's willing to ask, right? Nobody yeah. wants to go, shall we deal with 13? True. But I think for 21 is, is and, and upward, we have, we have the option to, to make diplomatic deals that aren't necessarily going to mean pure expansion, but I wouldn't say in law that we're not looking to expand. The sort of inevitable thing of military houses, they do tend to expand. Well, how how is, I mean, Sigma 21, how is that split? Is, is it just like one half belongs to Ryland, one half to KNF right now? or what is... Well, so right now, the situation yeah. in game and in roleplay is actually it's completely controlled by Rhineland. Oh, um, it we've is. We've got two okay. in the system um, okay. because the Kusari forces had to fall back. Uh, the 
starting point for the negotiations obviously wasn't we're going to keep all of the sigmas fuck you lot yeah it was very much um we need to come to a compromise here there are certain things we need in the sigmas sure. specifically we needed the uranium and the ability to build living space we need yeah. to expand the population um Kusari obviously has its claim as does GMG and their claims also conflict with each other so the suggestion and obviously this is very much something that can change mm -hmm. can be changed by devs and could even in negotiations continue to change is that it would be a two or three way split between Rhineland, Kusari and GMG oh, okay. where a separate third party actually administers the demilitarized system on behalf of those three parties so I've suggested that we use the corporations for that so that the corporations can have a sort of an interplay of power between each other and able to buy seats on that government, but obviously with the oversight of all three actual factions, or, or, or official player factions that want to have a say in 21. Yeah. But as with everything in Disco, you know, it's up in the air until the very moment it's written in yellow on a forum, you know? That's true. <laughs> That's true, true, true. I'm going to ask something uh, which is, which might be a little bit more personal and, uh, I mean, b before you, there were obviously different uh, Rhino military factions and leaders. So I'm just wondering, your faction now, um, what has changed since the new leadership, like from your point of view? Uh, and what has the Rhino military become? As in, like, what changed from the previous factions? Like, wh how do you defer you yourself? From the previous faction. Well, I mean, for us, we have the we have the sort of the legacy element. Obviously, being the original Rhineland military faction, we've yeah. we've stayed in that legacy, and obviously, I've just joined into that legacy really quite late. I see. Um, I will say that the multiple Rhineland factions is something that personally does bother me, um, <laughs> especially when it comes to the meme ones. It's, yeah. <laughs> for me, as a as a faction leader, the thing that really bothers me is when I get a message on Discord or through the game asking yeah. me they thought they were part of the fac official faction, oh. but they've joined. KR or the Bundeswehr or the meme there or anyone else. Yeah. Um, so that's personally frustrating. Mm, um, yeah. I think partly because it's something we actually talked about in the open Discord chat the other day. Um, a lot of people see it, uh, multiple factions as an opportunity to take away from another faction rather than an opportunity to take a different uh, approach to it. Okay. Um, in terms of what we do, in terms of what it's changed, obviously every new leader does bring something. Felipe was a very relaxed leader. He didn't tend to worry too much about rank restrictions and stuff like that. He just wanted people in game having a good time. Yeah. X, I think, to be honest, has continued a lot of that. Um, X really hasn't been that bad for me personally because when he came in, um, he made it quite clear that he wasn't intending to screw us up. And my job before X and after X has been to take care of Rhineland militaries and Rhineland roleplay in general and make sure that we're doing the necessary posts, going the direction we want to and actually exploring with the devs the various stories that we want to explore. Yeah, I see, I see. Um, I say for X's personal leadership style, I'd say the main thing that has changed <laughs> is he logs like mad. I don't know if you've ever seen him fly in his GB. Yeah. But <laughs> you can usually been... rely on looking <laughs> for some pews somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> I see. <laughs> So, we, we just got a question from the uh, live audience right now, so I want to jump into that one before I continue the ones that I wrote down. Absolutely, shoot away. So E23Gaming asks, why is Ryland being propped up to be so big and powerful when it's been in a constant state of war? How has it managed to maintain the resources to support any real expansion? I guess That's a brilliant this, question actually because it addresses it indeed. addresses a lot of the deep lore for Rhineland um, indeed. and I think some of the problems we have in Disco is because we get very involved like I'm not going to deny I'm very much a Rhineland centric player yeah, yeah. it can be difficult to know the ins and outs of what the, the lore is for other factions in our case Rhineland is a military house and has been since before vanilla yep. um, specifically it is industrially incredibly powerful we have an incredible capacity to build ships do mining industry and so on Rhineland's biggest problem has always been money. Yep. Um, we are deeply indebted, for example, to the Liberty government. I don't think anyone is uh, uh, unaware of that at this point. That sort of <laughs> <laughs> we, we have massive, massive debts that, that cause some basically knock-on issues in terms of employment rights, um, in terms of what we can actually afford to do for people, in terms of um, employment abilities, you know, extra care, the stuff that you would consider a social liberal government would normally do. Um, so to answer the question, basically the way we're able to keep expanding has been we keep borrowing to keep the industry rolling. And I think 
I mean, nobody's under doubt that, that uh, that's not a good long-term strategy, um, which is why the expansionist policy has sort of uh, been a part of that. Because for us, obviously, taking a new system with a new resource is a very easy way to overcome a financial difficulty with a injection of cash, essentially, with an injection of goods. Yep. I hope that answers your question, all right? <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, I, I kind of want to touch on that right now. It, it, didn't, didn't you guys have a trade deal, trade pact with Gallia? Yep, we if still I, do. You still do. Um, so this is we probably very also... jealously guard our neutrality in the war. Um, <laughs> we very carefully, to be honest, the general attitude, weird as it sounds from a military faction, yeah, yeah. is that we would like for Rhineland to have a period of peace. And the reason is essentially so that we can undertake the economic role play that people want to do yeah. to actually focus on those things and try and answer some of those questions for people. Because it is one we get a lot, how the hell can you afford it? True. Um, and going into, you know, hundreds of pages of, well, Liberty <coughs> this, they owe us this and we owe them them and then the vanilla law says this. Yeah, yeah. Um, to, to see the, the sort of the depth that Rhineland had to go to after the 80 years war and after the Liberty war, um, you just need to look at the synth paste and OSC holdings throughout the Rhineland. They control incredibly large waves of land compared to others because yeah. we had to give them that as sort of compensation for the financial losses that we sustained. I see, I see. But I so mean, the aim, the aim really of a period of peace to actually use resources because that's the problem. If you you can conquer new resources all you want, yeah. if you never develop them, you can never undo the damage to the economy that the war did in the first place. That's true. That's true. Yeah, I see what you mean. I see what you mean. Okay, so this one is, <laughs> I mean, sure, in 4.85, the uh, Rhineland versus Liberty War was like a really intense thing, like there were a lot of players playing there and uh, it brought a lot of activity between Liberty and Rhineland. I know now so uh, many people kind of want that feeling back, right? In my personal opinion, that kind of wouldn't work. It's a bit weird just to go again into war. But they, the question comes from Ice, and he's asking, when is the next Liberty Rhineland War? Or is there going to be any Liberty Rhineland War? Or is there going to be a tension between... Let's ask it this way. Is there going to be a tension between Liber Liberty and Rhineland? Or are I you think, guys... Yeah. I think I'll answer that in, in three stages. Number yes. one, yeah. um, I just want to let Ice know that fifth is rightful DHV property, obviously. <laughs> <laughs> but, Facts. You know, to, to, to answer, <laughs> to answer the real question, certainly there's tension. Um, you just need to look about a month ago at the bearing crisis. Yep. Um, LSF pushing up and Rhineland very much going, we're not letting you have that. Mm -hmm. um, but on both sides, there is, I think, a general feeling that we don't necessarily want to go to outright war. Um, certainly on the Rhineland side, both in and out of our PEDA, the general feeling that we want to do peace, we want to do diplomacy, and we want to focus more on doing small, interesting cues and trying to generate these large-scale wars with people lose interest in quite quickly. Mm -hmm. And because that's been the problem, you said obviously Liberty, sorry, Liberty um, Rhineland War really did generate a lot of activity. But I think part of the reason for that is we had a lot more people around. Obviously, yeah. We had a lot of more people, yeah. <laughs> exactly. And the second part of it being that the players were engaged with why we were doing that, right? There was genuine reasons for the player. There was genuine reason for people's characters to be involved in that. Whereas Kusari War, we fought it, but to be honest, at no point did it make a lot of sense to anyone. Nobody seems to be really on yeah, board no. with it on either side. Um, and that's, that's, to be honest, where we started pushing the peace was when we realized that literally none of the faction leaders care to keep fighting the war. Yeah. And none of their members particularly do either. There comes a point where regardless of the sort of the role play, which in our opinion works better as peace anyway, yeah. because to many of us, Kusari is a natural ally, not a natural enemy. Liberty true, is a true. natural enemy. True, true. But to sort of answer Faisal's question more succinctly, I don't think there's going to be another war in the immediate future. Obviously, I'm not going to exclude any possibilities, diplomacy mm -hmm. being dip and politics being what it is. But um, tensions are absolutely going to continue being because yeah. the military's facing off over a system, for example, that's always going to create some tension. And I'm hoping that tension is going to create some interesting role play opportunities. Well, the thing is, uh, I guess why uh, many bring up liberty is I had this discussion with many others is because the new players start in Pennsylvania, right? So the first <laughs> uh, house they will see to the right is Rhineland. And uh, right now, I mean, but I mean, you can't just say like if Rhineland would go into war. It's just Liberty in general has been 
really neutral as in uh, around New York, Manhattan, right? So they were like against, okay, they fought Gallia, but they were they, they went to Britonia to fight uh, Gallia, right? So any new player wouldn't see that activity. While the uh, Rhineland Liberty War was always like, let's say Ham Hamburg or Texas. So people saw those wars and were like, holy shit, that's awesome, right? But, uh, but I mean, there's there isn't just Rhineland. I just think Kosari could have gone into War of Liberty too. But you know, yeah, I mean, a lot of people have been speaking about the potential of yeah. another Liberty War lately. Kosari has been suggested as an option. I mean, I've even heard people saying like, revengeist strike Britonia? because we didn't really need them. But I think <laughs> a lot of that is yeah. I mean, it's just as ridiculous as the people True. suggesting um, that Rhineland declare war on Bretonia. Yeah. yeah. Um, yeah. While I can understand the logic that people see, oh. Bretonia is an easy target for Rhineland right now. Yeah. They also overlook the fact that we're essentially allied, you know, unofficially, admittedly, um, <laughs> what? Okay. on account of the fact that the bias. No. <laughs> well, no, that the issue is more that yeah. um, in our in character, okay. the Rhineland government um, currently is consists largely of people who have what we would call an imperial leaning. Mm, um, yeah. There are very there, obviously the military has developed in the last few years very strongly toward a. I think what in, in political terms you might call sort of Japanese style military adventurism. Yeah. Where occasionally we simply do a thing and then ask the government to accept it in, in retrospect. Sort of like the Kwantung army, if you're familiar at all with that. Yeah. Um, in terms of actual politics and why we cannot really go on Bretonia, because Bretonia is the starting point and was the starting point for a lot of our um, imperial role play and for a lot of characters who have relations with those. Yep. So obviously they aren't overly keen mm -hmm. on going and declaring on a potential ally. Um, obviously there's there's other there's other in, intricate details involving you know potential loans and so on that one doesn't necessarily want to go into for fear of boring people. I see. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but if it's a case of I think a lot of people say X X would be cool, but don't necessarily know the intricacies of those factions' politics. Um, yep. It wouldn't make a great deal of sense, for example, for them to be working against each other. Um, but I mean, for me personally, I think there does need to be something, but I don't personally need to believe it always needs to be a war. Well, um, I mean, people have suggested declaring, the, everyone declare on liberty, let's break their plot armor, but that's <laughs> realistically not how it's going to work. True, true, true. But I mean, I'm going to I'm gonna touch back on that uh, Britonia versus Lineland thing in the Omegas. I mean, I myself had a couple of theories or how that could work or whatever. It's just the, all those factions that are inside Omegas could get a boost of activity if you guys would kind of turn the Omegas into a full conflict zone between each other and the other factions, right? But um, hold on, I don't, I don't want to go into that. I just, I just want to ask you in particular, I said Durandal mentioned something on the End of Gallic War uh, interview. He said, let me say you this, Bretonia is going to get more active in the Omegas. So I'm just wondering now, since Western with uh, Peregrine uh, asked, when are we retaking the Omegas? So are the Rhineland even still interested in the Omegas? Like, what's what's going on? Without yeah. without putting anything out there that could overly be abused in terms of details. Yeah. Um, yes, we're still very much in the interested in the Omegas. Okay. Um, one of the things that has absolutely been discussed as a potential uh, if after the war is what we wanted to do perhaps look at dealing with our internal issues roleplay yeah. wise um, and internal issues for us realistically means dealing with factions like the un and the um, hessians, huh? wr and the red hessians yeah, I see. now obviously dwr are essentially non-existent yeah. and the un are pet pirates at this point Rip. yeah yeah <laughs> true true I mean, for me, the UN thing, it started terribly. It was not something we wanted. Um, in fact, I was the one who was PM'd by Justin, who yeah. said, you don't have a choice. You've got to do this. That's plot. Wow. We made it work. And since yeah. then, we have developed some really interesting things out of it and sort of started working on our own version of the Hogosha, if you will. I see. I see. In terms of the Omegas, we definitely do want to return focus there, whether it's in a full-scale war. Um, it's something that Bath and RM have discussed, cooperating in the Omegas, for example. Ah, um, okay, I see. Yeah, so it's, it's a cooperation it's instead of a, a turf war between each other. Yeah, and okay. one of the things, I mean, it, it, a lot of that develops out of some of the RP, for example, Alpha has been doing um, as the RFP since he brought them back. It's been, he's been doing a great job with it. Yeah. 
Um, he's reached out to the LPI and to the BPA to try and make sort of a more international Interpol style thing where we can help each other across borders. Because obviously one of the most frustrating things as a policeman in the Omegas yeah. is they're going to jump to the other Omega and you can't chase them. True. <laughs> so we solved that simply by allowing them to chase them each other and working together like that. And I think from that level of working together, the fact that the SIS is actively engaging with our Let's call them revolutionary elements. Revolutionary elements. Uh, <laughs> I see. <laughs> yeah. Well, oh, it's, hard, well, it's really hard to call them an element at this point when it really does represent the vast majority of the government. They've been slowly sneaking in for the past three true, years. True, true. Well, the thing is, uh, let me get back on the Hessians here. Obviously, they are a bigger threat than any other unlawfuls in Rhineland, right? I mean, as in they have the fleets they have whatever they they uh they got I mean, what was it Dre was it dresden i guess because the the thing the thing for example that the story devs have, have repeatedly made clear to us and that's something i think that both lawful and unlawful factions really need to get more aware of what? is well for example the simple statement that, that the entire force of the rha yeah equals one of our battle groups and we have 14 of them so in theory, and this is the thing you'll often hear from lawfuls, how can the RHA still exist? We can crush them in a single battle. Which, yes, if they were ever stupid yeah. enough to come out in the open, we probably could. But from vanilla law to this day, the great strength of groups like the RHA is that they're not dumb enough to come out and fight a superior force in the open. First. They very much rely on the asteroid field, the hit and raids, the piracy. And I think, to be honest, to give Wesker his credit, some of that stuff that they were doing around Falster, where they were doing hit and run on a massive scale, abusing, not abusing, using their strength yeah, yeah. Um, to actually hit and run, but never staying long enough to get fucked up by the Bretonian fleets. It's exactly how they should be doing that. Yeah. Well, I mean, you so, also could say that's one way to say that, but uh, there's also, they also have allies. Like, let's not forget, forget about that. Well, that's what I mean about yeah. the, the Ulster situation being so oh, beautiful so in that regardless of, of our personal opinions of it or our political opinions, obviously mm -hmm. our ALG created a bit of a nightmare there for us out of character. Um, <laughs> of it was a great example of yeah. what unlawfuls can do True. in terms of combining their unique strategies. I mean, again, MEP, to give MEP his incredible credit, um, he actually joined the, the war, has done the GMG thing. They would come into Frankfurt, they would hit a trade convoy, and as soon as we started coming for them, they'd fall back into Sigma 13 and fight us in the cloud, where they really did have the advantage. Because, you know, our big caps. True. I see you, I see you. Okay. So I think that's it. the alliance is the playing politics is something that they really have a potential to do in some way beyond a house faction. And that's, for me, what's attractive about smaller factions, is that yeah. you can do... You can't do huge things that are going to change the entire system, which is great about houses, you know, you're always going to have that. But you also don't have the same level of oversight and fuck you from the devs about changing True. stuff. So True. you can work with the factions and do VRP. And I personally really enjoyed watching the island stuff happen. Yeah, I see, I see. Okay. Well, uh, let me jump on to the uh, questions on the notepad. So let me see you. Fire him off. <laughs> so I know you have mentioned a lot of uh, stuff, how to advance Rhineland, but uh, this question has asked, has been asked by Rogue. It's uh, what's the plan to make Rhineland great again? Like, like you know. <laughs> well, the, the first step the... of the plan to make Rhineland great again is yeah. imperialism, two economy, and then three. Uh, obviously, everything in Sirius belongs to Rhineland. So whenever the dev is ready to rename everything to Rhineland, we'll be ready. I see. <laughs> <laughs> a more serious answer to yeah. that question is, um, in terms of in roleplay making Rhineland great, um, the big yeah. problem always has been and always will be the economy. Um, mm -hmm. Sniper, we have a ridiculously large population, but no internal food sources. We're entirely reliant on liberty for that. That's that's true. I actually I, I see a couple more factions doing that lately, and uh, I think that's a really cool way to. Uh, make the uh, trading factions or whatever corporations more relevant in a story yeah. lore point so i hope many more other corporations take that as an example because that's cool like as example let me give an uh, um, example of our volgograd industrial right in order to um showcase like how the coalition economy is doing they they did this whole 
like you know how they spend social credits whatever and uh, how they uh, trade arms and stuff role play so you can actually showcase hey look we're doing this we're doing that so I, I, that's actually nice so props to sniper for that for the rs and stuff yeah it, it's been really good and it's something yeah. that we, we really want to keep developing um, yeah. and we've, we've managed to reach out to crater and a few other people and we've, that in itself is great that you can get role play just by going we're going to do a thing Traders. who can help us yeah 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 we we decided one of the possible routes would be yuma fruit hmm. right why not yeah. grow yuma fruit see what happens sure, i mean sure. as, as with any long-term plan where you really want to change the history to change the world around you yeah it's going to in the end come down to the devs so what we try to do is cover every single option have fun doing it and then go is any of this good enough to canonize boys true 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 <laughs> to, you mentioned Traders, so I just want to hop into the uh, next bigger question, which will obviously have many questions. And I will mention Crater again. So, where is your faction standing right now? Diplomacies, RP stories, procedures. This is a like obviously a general question, like you could answer so many possible things. And I think many stuff you already answered, but. Uh, Sorry, mate. You uh, cut out there. I've only just started hearing you again. Oh wow. Okay, that's weird. Well, I said, well, I said, where's your faction standing right now? Diplomacies, RP stories, procedures. Like, what, what steps do you, t uh, are you gonna take next, or whatever it's gonna be? Diplomacies. Like, you know, with which factions are you cooperating with? What's going on? Um, um, I mean, in the short term, obviously, we're working with KNF and GMG, both in and out of character, to, to resolve the, the Sigma Wars, the yep. Kosari Wars, generally referred to. Um, in terms of long-term diplomacy, it's no secret to anyone that we all want to go Imperial. Um, how exactly that will look, how exactly that will happen, I honestly can't say yet. There is still a great deal of stuff in the air. We have been given some information for definite, some information for possible, but the final story hasn't been written in yellow, so to speak. I see. In terms of politics that we do and can affect without their involvement, um, the big things are working with the houses around us. Um, mm. Rhineland does have a reputation of being a, the bad, big bad military house that is always <laughs> shitting on people. True. Um, something that we want, obviously, the reputation that is a big powerful military because that's both in law something that's true and out of character something that is lovely to hear. Yeah. But we don't necessarily want to be in constant conflict with our neighbors around us, um, in particular. <laughs> Bretonia and Liberty yeah. are people we're working with and for the corporations uh, the Gallia focus remains a big deal um, DHD for example we remain deeply interconnected with EFL and we obviously have long-term plans involving trade lanes and gates and so on that we would like to to expand so I think in general honestly it's just a case of we want to reach out to as many people as possible and see what role play comes out of that and then if that role play ends up being war it ends up being war if it ends up being peaceful and happy and lovely then brilliant I see, I see. So, so I'm gonna bring the Crater back here. What's your relationship right now with Crater? Like, what's... They, ha I mean, they are mostly lo located around Liberty, Bretonia and Taos. Like, how do you guys in Rhineland... Uh, so the official yeah. government standpoint on the Criterions is that providing they're not traveling in military ship ships, they are an unwelcome in Rhineland, but they aren't particularly popular. I see. Um, Truthfully, in terms of the military, we don't really care. Um, the Criterions barely come to Rhineland, and when they do, it's usually in relation to the work they're doing with the corporations. Um, so the most common thing that we see Criterions hauling um, Yuma, for example, for RS. Yep. Um, to be honest, the only people who have taken issue with them to date have been BDM, and that was more to trigger Rhinewehr than it was anything else. So I think diplomatically, the, the Criterions are really a, a non-entity almost. They could go either way. Yep. But we don't interact with them, I think, enough um, as, a, as a government or as a military so it's um, just, to be able to have a strong anti-opinion or anything like that. So it's just trading uh, partners or whatever? Yeah, I mean, their involvement in the Galleon War at no point has harmed us. Their their actions haven't particularly gone against us, so we don't really have a reason to, to have, take issue with them. Yep, um, I see. And they're not really enough on our frontier for them to make them a viable target to invade or anything like that, so... <laughs> Happy days, really. <laughs> I see, I see. So, but obviously, we're coming for you, Volga Grad. <laughs> True. <laughs> Be aware. Well, the next question is again from the live audience is Will Rhino repair the Hamburg to Bering Jump Gate? 
I guess this one has also been asked even back around my time, like before I was banned. <laughs> many, many times. <laughs> many, many times. Asked, yeah. How um, the answer is yes and no. Yes and the no. answer is yes, we do want to repair it. Uh, it is something that is in the long term plan. Uh, no, it's not something in the immediate. It's not something that we're trying to push through in the next few updates. It's something so, that would probably take a year or two to sort out. Probably, and the second part of that is whether or not the devs would even allow it. Because true, to date, they true. have been very careful not to say yes or no. And normally you can get an indication on this one. I don't think they know whether they want to open that connection up again. I see. So it's kind of, uh, I mean, low, uh, low priority right now. So. Sort of, yeah. Because, yeah. I mean, not least with the strong presence of the UN in the system, yep. since the closer relationship of the UN and the RM, we can kind of use them as an effective militia to keep our border secure. We don't need to commit massive forces to keep bearing secure because the UN are there for us. Yep. All we need to do is whenever the LSF gets jumpy, it show up on that borderline and remind them that there's a divide <laughs> that neither side can go across. True, true, true. I see. Uh, and to give them credit, so far every time we've shown up, they've backed right off. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, speaking about LSF, they've been weirdly active in Omegas, but I think they haven't been around the uh, borders in Rhineland, so I guess that's... Yeah, that tends to. They were. There was one the other day actually. Tried oh. to try to come in, but we chased him out pretty quick. I think it's generally more a case of uh, they've got other things to focus on, and obviously bearing. Yep. The problem there was that there was a lot of potential, and then let's be honest, Vex killed it. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Vex. Oh, Unfortunately, wow. the, the modifications of the of that system and the changes they made in particular to the premium scrap immediately took the civilian population out of the system. Oh. Um, and unfortunately, in my opinion, anyway, the best example of random roleplay happening is when you have a lot of flat factions with conflicting interests, aims and ID lines where they can't necessarily all engage mm. each other and so on because it forces them into a situation where they talk it out and then uh, yeah. and yeah. For, for me certainly Bearing created an amazing amount of roleplay all the panic about wait shit are they about to invade is Liberty about to go fucking nuclear on us do we need to move battleships down there doing patrols and interacting with people um, and then of course all those bases have disappeared since the disappearance of uh, the premium scrap is that yeah, to say. True, true, true. Bearing bearing is kinda of weird though, I don't get it. Like this free this one uh freeport I guess Freeport two is uh is yeah, literally pirate, a pirate base. Like how do they maintain that? Like <laughs> if, if it is an odd one. I mean yeah. pirates in the way they're portrayed in Freelancer is a slight odd one. Yeah. Because obviously in the vanilla nor there's indications toward independent piracy, but you never actually see an independent pirate. You always see groups that have a political aim. Right? Even the rogues have a relatively political aim yeah. for what is essentially just, I want to rob some money. Mm -hmm. um, but I mean, obviously in Disco, we built this wonderful law, but people are independent and people, there are pirates. Obviously things like the Pirate Guild can actually become quite organized from individuals. True. And bearing plays into that really well because it's a primacy zone for them. It is. It is. Yeah, I see. What you mean. So I, I think I think I can accept the sort of roleplay explanation that somewhere in there there is enough freelancers and independent pirates being paid by the profits of people stealing. Because I assume, I mean, I don't know about you, but if I own a pirate port, yeah, and I've got pirates coming in taking a cut of what they made for that day, and true. I'm going to use no, that to pay for everything. True. True. So no. I kind of imagine, like, I can't say that it does not say in the info card that's the case yeah but i would assume that it's a combination of freelancers being paid from the proceeds of piracy and probably the hellfire legion occasionally pitch Hellf sorry, not hellfire fucking ah, harmony. harmony pitching okay. in occasionally because realistically they rely on the existence of the freeport they've yes. got their own bases but the freeport is that wonderful contact point for them makes sense okay i see what you mean yeah I think a lot of a lot of stuff in the roleplay. Sometimes you just have to sort of accept that there are going to be inconsistencies, and that you kind of need to do your best to explain it in a logical way. Well, My example for Voice of Bolton, which I don't know if, if you've yeah. ever seen the info card, but if you actually look at the numbers that the info card gives you about the temperatures and the speed, wind speed, and the rotation of the planet, um, that planet is not possible. It should have spun itself out of its own orbit dec decades ago. Okay. So you kind of need to kind of close an eye and go, you know what? We're just going to pretend that the numbers make sense. <laughs> Right, right. I see. Okay, okay. So, uh, diplomacies, relationships. My, uh, actually, I'm, I'm really wondering because, like, many houses haven't been talking about that much. Uh, the core right now and order 
as the uh, Omicron factions. You have seen the core has been expanding into Omega-3, obviously they have a couple cap ships there uh, because of the uh, Allen Shipyard incident, right? How yeah, is your... we're completely following because obviously we have a specific relation with core as well. Yeah, I was, I was, <laughs> I was going to ask because I, you know, I have my sources. <laughs> So I had this uh, weird, um, what was that? There was, um, back when Silver was leading Core, I think, there was this tension between Rhineland and Core, apparently, uh, over Sigma 15, was it? Yeah, so, what we call Lunaburg. Lunaburg, they Lunaburg call yeah. <laughs> so, what's going on? Like, what is your relationship with the Core right now? So, right now, since Silver um, left yeah. the hand of the list obviously things have changed a bit but even on the silver's time it was a tense relationship but it was a productive one and um, obviously i don't know how well informed people are about that relationship but rhineland and core are actually allied it's oh, yeah. a yeah. limited alliance uh, in that <laughs> they, we don't, really don't help each other very much yeah, <laughs> probably yeah. less than we should help each other true, true. Um, but we haven't we haven't had any major diplomatic incidents <clears throat> Um, and we were able to resolve the, the 15 situation. Um, basically, we claim 15 and Roe as ours, and we sign over Roe to a limited extent to them. Yep. Um, it includes a provision for us to still be able to go there and patrol there and enforce our laws there, for example. Um, but it also obligates us to help and protect them and defend them against any occasional claim against their claim in Roe, which yeah. as of yet, nobody has been stupid enough to do. Mm. So we haven't had to kick up for that one. But, I would say, both in and out of character, there's a definite feeling of tension at times. Yep. Um, the big thing, obviously, tech sales. We, st we, tr we still trade ships and whatnot, but obviously there's always... We don't want you to take it here, and we would prefer yeah. you didn't engage back with them, and, and so on and so forth. And we <laughs> outright banned them from taking any of our ships to Kuthari, just in case they accidentally lost one. It's right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I see what you mean. And obviously, in terms of daily interactions, and at the end of the day, whether you like it or not, it's who you interact with daily are the people you grow the closest or the worst enemies with. Yep. And in the case of Core, we don't interact with them, I think, nearly enough. And obviously, they focus much more on working with Velvet, uh, OSI, and other Zona organizations, which are more relevant to the Omicrons than we are, realistically. Yep. Rhineland's main interest in the Omicrons is via DHC and the Azurite mining trade. So it's, it's not it's not something we're massively into really yeah, <laughs> yeah but i mean uh, mentioning dhc yeah the dhc has a base in delta right if i remember correctly. yeah any yeah, so, port. yeah so uh yeah i see what you mean yeah, so delta I'm... is obviously rightful rhineland clay <laughs> <laughs> well, let's remind people again yeah no but uh coming to order now it's just it's just funny to me because I know many people have been speculating like come on the order like you know after the nomad war you know they saved humanity and shit and all that but then suddenly they went back to being terrorists and stuff right so uh, yeah it's how, a weird one that I personally can't always wrap my it, head around exactly it's weird so I'm just wondering how the houses have been holding up with all of that. Like, wh how are the order looked at by Rhineland? Let me ask you this: Like, are they a big threat, or are just they just they suddenly disappeared, or aren't they as active in lore? Like, I'm just talking in roleplay in your house as they are in different houses, or what's going on? Actually, I mean, order are a weird one in roleplay and out of roleplay, <laughs> partly because of the segmented nature of yeah. their factions. Um, you can't really do a deal with the Order anymore. Um, yeah. There's multiple factions, and as far as we can tell, they will hate each other. True. Um, <laughs> officially, the Rhineland position on all Order is that they are to be exterminated on site. Uh. And the reason is actually nothing to do with nomads or terrorism. The reason is they openly declared, <clears throat> sorry, um, they declared war on us. So ever since then, we've kind of went, okay then. Ah, I uh, see. That being said, they are neither in or out of character active or powerful enough to really make an impact in it. So primarily, if we're honest, it's been they've they've mostly resorted to in role play scouting missions and stuff like that, and passing that information onto GMG quite a lot. Yeah. Um, and we occasionally see you know a lone auto GB or something floating about, but truthfully, they tend to be indies. Yeah. And one of the things I will notice as an out of character thing is a lot of those indies do not understand why the houses treat them so. True. Um, because to an indie who you've just let's say you've just finished the campaign yeah. in Discovery. 
you're a good guy. Yeah, <laughs> true. You're like, you are the literal definition the of a good guy. Trent yeah. was order, Juni was order, Aurelian is order. Now, true. Aurelian, you can question whether he was really a good person or not, but a lot of good people were in the order. True, true. And frankly, I mean, there, there obviously was a great deal of uh, stuff happening roleplay-wise a long time ago in Discovery's history. Yeah. That very few people were around for and even less seemed to remember. Um, most of my information on this just comes from digging through those old forum RP threads to try and inform myself. Yeah. And yeah. the thing that jumps out at me is that there isn't really that good a reason for the order hostility. Yeah. But the order ID seems, and this is just my opinion, seems to be used a lot by people who want to go everywhere and cause problems. It's weird though. I mean, I have to call someone out here. <laughs> but um, Golansky is a bit... <laughs> Golansky has, a, in my opinion, has a role in this because I remember many people have asked, dude, like, can't we do at least like some houses, like at least one or two houses that, are, that deal with us or something? See, that's and the irony is Rhineland is, is the best choice for that. I we know, right? We be open to a relationship with anti-nomads. One of our long-term plans is that we want to turn Rhineland into, once again, the anti-nomad house. Yeah. We have, in law, a worse experience, a longer experience. True. Of how badly it damages us True. to allow the nomads to fuck with us. So True. for us, we would be open to the relationship. The problem is, yeah. they, as players of the whole, in order, have decided that they are against the houses, it seems. The result of which is there's no opening. The, they, the last communication, I think, was from Calmira, yeah. just threatening us. Which, <laughs> to be honest, we were like, we're already at war, why are you threatening wow, us? Wow, okay. We're saying something about don't come to Omicron Major or something. It's like, um, wow. we're already at war, we're not going to listen to you. <laughs> <laughs> oh god, man, what the hell. Well, I just... Okay, I see. Well, the thing I is, I, I, can, I, can, I can quote you one thing, and uh, that is... I remember Golansky said something like, uh, I'd rather deal with unlawfuls than lawfuls. And since then, they never changed. They never changed. And I was like, why? Fuck. Like, Personally, I would love to see development of at least an order faction um, yeah. that perhaps returns a little bit more to its roots. Well, I mean, there is the uh, ASF, you know. <laughs> <laughs> as with any as with any faction, you can't really do business A with an unofficial, which I believe yeah, ASF still are. Yeah, yeah. It's it's difficult. Realistically, just from a trying to get a uh, trying to get a, a response from the devs, it's it is realistically hard to do unless everyone is official and in. That's true. It's the same. It's it's, it's the same with uh, when you try to attack, let's say the coalition, right? As ASF and your order, now. Golanski's team made a pact with them, so how are you supposed to think? It's, it's kind of really weird. So it's the same like if you want to do business with houses, but the actual NPC faction doesn't allow you to because you know official factions have been doing that for years, many many years. I think I think the solution to that is is people need people who want to do order. Yeah. Um, need to need to join the factions that are going to represent what they do and push towards that. True. Because I mean, we've proven that UN, for example, proves that you can absolutely adjust. You can absolutely adjust stuff with a little roleplay. Now, admittedly, that was helped a lot by the devs simply yeah. deciding that, that was going to be the case. Yeah. But there are other examples where you, you can see that happening as well. And I mean, the Kusari War right now is we are looking at changing a shit ton of yeah. reputation hacks and introducing potentially. I mean, we've been discussing introducing new IFF and IDs. Hmm. Um, so it can be done through roleplay. Um, I think the problem is is that order is a difficult thing to play. Um, for me personally, for example, the current versions of the order just don't appeal. For me, I would want to be the agent working against infiltration yep. who is friends with everyone, not we're going to pew you because we have Osiris's and they're powerful. Which is very often, if I'm honest, what it feels like dealing with order. Hmm. Because the, the few order we have left are mostly people use their ID for a specific thing. True. Um, I would I would liken that to um, the AOI, which the primary reason you see AOI online is because <laughs> they've come to kill a transport. Dude, dude, the whole AOI thing is something I never understood anyway. Because like, uh, like, the wild was interesting, you know, from the Wilde uh, in Ger uh, in Rhineland in Germany <laughs> in Rhineland. Uh, so I, I kind of liked the, them being a part of the uh, vanilla kind of the infectees which were in Rhineland, the infectees in Kusari, so they were like kind of like split. But 
but now it's just AOI having all this control over all wilds. And uh, they're just like Meme Luck said here, they're, they're kind of ru ruined. Yeah, I guess so. The wild faction is kind of weird. It's, yeah. Yeah, it's, yeah. A, it's a weird one because it has yeah. so much potential. It's an amazing ID True. that does give you roleplay potential like you would not believe. True. But unfortunately, the primarily I think the engage line, while very much necessary, um, I don't know about you guys, but the main the main interactions I have with AOI is on a transport and they've come to kill me, they do two lines and they blow me away. So the Gallic War ended. Uh, Woohoo, I guess. But <laughs> so what's what's Rhineland gonna... What's gonna happen to Rhineland's trade pact? Do you guys already know something? So Something you can share? For the In terms of Gallia? Yeah, like, I mean... Absolutely nothing, basically. Shit. <laughs> um, <laughs> I see. It was obviously discussed. I mean, one of the options that was discussed in the government was straight up declaring war on them. Really? Um, okay. Well, yeah. I mean, it was. I mean, the uh, government will discuss. Uh, will discuss every. Yeah. Will discuss every possible variation of a, of a, an event if they can. Obviously, um, one of them was. Um, someone was saying very strongly that you know, five hundred plus million dead. <laughs> is not something that we should be ignoring True. and continuing to trade with. Um, there was also the counter option of, uh, you know, Bretonia is very weak right now, you know. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Um, in terms yeah. of the trade relationship, we have very clearly made it clear that we don't condone the genocide. Um, we haven't done so too strongly, partly because the fact is Rhineland was planning its own genocide. True. Um, True. Hopefully it never comes to it. And at the, obviously the, the peace slash... Um, Truce came first, yeah, but realistically, yeah. we were planning to do the exact same thing to haunt you. So <laughs> <laughs> we I can't see. talk overly loudly out of character. True. Right. Um, right. In character, they're dead. There's no benefit to be gained mm -hmm. from us declaring on Gallia. Um, Rhineland has Rhineland is a, is a, in a corporate um, oligarchy. If we're if we're realistic about it, mm -hmm. the corporations, both in and out of character, have an unbelievable amount of power. That's true. Yeah. yeah. And they're not ready to stop trading with with uh, the, the Galleons, really, because well, the question... for DHV, for example, we have lane technology to gain from that. Yeah. Something that we want long-term, long when we're talking like five years plus, we would like our own lanes. Um, that requires doing business with EFL, because a gear is not given, gonna give given to us. True. That's not in their interest. So for the corporation, it's kind of playing the game of where we can benefit and where we can trade. Because yeah. obviously the Triangle, for example, was a damn good reason to keep that alliance right. alive, no matter what. <laughs> True. Um, and in terms of the government itself, is we are trying to position ourselves as a relatively neutral entity. Yeah. Um, we're not trying to get into major wars. And, well, Gallia gives us a playing card against Liberty. The fact is that, I can't give you too many details, yeah. but the fact is we've done deals with Liberty parts and government and with corporations where the counter threat was, well, to be honest, if you don't give us a good deal, we're going to get the same and better deal from Gallia. So it's been really useful for us, and it's not something we want to give up as a bargaining chip. True. I see you. I see you. I mean, to give you one great example that I can give you all the details on, yeah. um, we've been talking with um, Liberty regarding the uh, access to the lane data. I'm sure you might be aware, Agira, since the Liberty War, doesn't control Rhineland's lanes anymore. Yep. Okay. But they still have a great deal of the legal responsibility. Um, we're still, we've actually asked recently about clarifications for um, exactly who controls what, because it's not made entirely clear. Yep. But for us, Agira is not playing ball, so we can go to EFL and say, hey, can you give us access codes? Because you run Agira lanes as well. Can you give us the codes to make that happen? Hmm. Now, if EFL says yes, that's an immediate chip that I can then turn around to the Agira heads with, that I can turn around to, um, I mean, IC in particular has been doing a lot of a negotiation for Liberty and say, hey, we got this really good deal, you want to beat it? Which for us is obviously fucking amazing sure, to have. Sure, um, sure. And to be truthful about it, Rhineland, you're normally, I don't want to say the underdog, you're normally the one that shit on. <laughs> so being in a position where you can shit on other people is actually really fun. <laughs> that's true, yeah, that's true. But I'm just, I'm just, I'm just wondering, because uh, obviously some details haven't been, um, how should I say that? The devs, especially in the interview, didn't go into much details to what exactly is going to happen to Gally, right? So I did my own speculation because, because I mean, there's no uh, notice about the if the council is going to take over Gallia or if there's just going to be this whole bubble, isolated bubble of uh, 
DRN versus Council, and it's just going to be civil war all over. I mean, yeah. as with as with anything in Disco, you can never say until it's exactly. in yellow. So, so we, we can definitely draw some conclusion from the things that we can see as one ICs and dev chat and so on. True. Um, personally, I'm inclined to say that I think what will happen is the MIG will undertake a massive retreat. Yeah. The MIG will split roughly equally into an imperial, sorry, a, a royalist slash a, um, a, a republican faction. Yeah. Um, which we've already seen sort of happening in the lore in the info cards. If you read the info cards of those destroyers, for example, in Leeds, yep. um, they, they hint at, at, at very much a large scale rebellion. And obviously, the council is now in open communication with elements of the leadership of MRG, and they're making no secrets about it. Um, the fact that, again, that they're, they're openly cooperating in Leeds and not shooting each other surprisingly often, mm. um, I think leads me to conclude that what we're going to have is probably a royalist rebellion versus a council slash republican MRG government. Well, that, but obviously that's my speculation based yeah, but, on what I've seen. And what I've... But that's, that's going to be interesting because you have been dealing with the king up, up until now. So once the council would take yeah. over, the relationship would change. Rhineland. Yeah, absolutely. Mm. Um, personally, I'm looking forward to, to going through the roleplay and seeing how that's going to change. I see. Um, the advantage that Rhineland has in terms of how we do business as Galio is we very rarely do business government to government. Yeah. yeah. Um, for the most part, it's actually been companies like Republican and Dowman working with EFL and GMS. I mean, Dowman recently bought stakes in GMS itself um, and is looking to expand its operation fully into, um, into Gallia from Rhineland. Yeah. So. Yeah. A lot of that will be negotiating amongst the much more practically minded companies that are looking to make money, trade and gain benefit rather than play politics. Yep. Um, so I think there's still very much an option to do business with either side or even doing business with both. It's just too early days to say we're going to side with the Royalists, we're going to side with the Republicans. That's true. Because in general, we do not want to take sides. We want to do as much trade with Gallia as possible and make Rhineland stronger economically. I see. And well, well the last question in, as in for the Rhineland military, there will be a one more personal question at the end, but uh, I'm going to leave this. So what are your goals and what is the future for the Rhineland military right now? Like wh how, like, you know how they ask, how do, uh, how do you see Rhineland in 10 years? <laughs> so, yeah. like, something like that. I was about to say, <laughs> where, do you, where, where do you see yourself? In exactly, five years? exactly. That's, so that's what I... I mean, immediate, this. very, very short-term goals are always going to be respond flogging. Um, yeah. That is a large part of what we do, um, as well as patrolling. And um, one of the beautiful things about having the RFP is a lot of that pressure has come off us, but it's still very much part of something we do. Yeah. In terms of long-term goals, um, it's a little f difficult to say for certain because obviously there's politics and then there's there's RM. Yeah. Um, what we would like to either push back into the Omegas, um, do something mm -hmm. there, and of course, in and out of character confirms that people have. Yep. Um, and to be entirely brutally honest, one of the one of the concerns is they don't particularly want to deal with the out of character aspect of the RHA. But there is a great deal of potential role play there. Um, another thing that really, really, I mentioned, I touched on it earlier. Um, we want to go anti nomad again, um, and that mm. has come with working through DHC oh, and Velvet. Yeah. We want to actively engage the nomads. Um, we want to actively be the house that sends our fleets out hunting nomads um, and doesn't worry over much about. Oh, you're you're politically inclined to want that system. Well, fuck you. We're busy with nomads. <laughs> Dude, um, actually, you know what? That sounds like I'm I'm coming from uh, from the Crossfire community, right? Like really uh, long ago, 1.6, 1.7, whatever. And uh, I always saw that they used the uh, story plot for Ryland and Kusari that they got really active in the uh, nomad worlds so i'm actually thinking your idea here that's how they should be i think like rhineland and Kusari. especially for rhineland because True. throughout history in the yeah. law especially with the um with the freaking nomad war yeah it became very clear to the rhinelandic people that we suffered more than most other houses beneath True. the influence of, of the nomads True. it makes sense for us to have an incredibly deep hatred and fear of yeah. the nomads yeah. the whole never again mentality the fact that we would rather execute someone on the suspicion of yeah. being infected than actually bother checking and True. for me that makes a lot of sense as a house that's basically traumatic fear of something it had a very much a bad experience of True. because their actions led to well it led to one of the greatest deaths Rhineland has True. it's the current liberty debt I mean, just every time Rhineland tried to do something, that got worse. So <laughs> I think I think really returning to the nomads is something that that would be really fun. 
the sort of the downside and the, the problem is is obviously uh, out of character concerns one of which is we don't want people to QQ and we don't want to tread on people's toes too badly yeah. and we are painfully aware that if we start sending fleets into the Omegas and the sorry, into the Omicrons yeah. that's going to immediately cause some balance issues for people well um, I mean let, let, let's be honest though if I remember there, there was this one campaign of yours in uh, what was it Omicron C or G which oh, yeah. uh, had the Corsairs against Rhineland or something and you had your first battle group. It's been really amazing just being able to log on and have some random pews and literally nobody complaining about it, even if they got ganked. True. Um, so that's been amazing. But obviously, whenever you develop a good relationship with someone out of character, there comes a point where you're just fighting the same people over and over again. That's true. But not something we wanted to do. <laughs> that's true. That's very true. And that's also where that push from the the the, the Omicrons. Obviously, we still have Turingen. Um, for those people who are familiar with Turingen, um, yeah. there is Valhalla, and there's a great deal of wild presence, sure. um, which we we want to we want to play with. Um, and obviously, the Omicrons present another another a nomad front. But there's always that issue of nomad activity. That's true. That's <laughs> it's true. Yeah. <laughs> it, it's part of why we've been reluctant to sort of pull the trigger. Is that a large complaint about the Kusari war is that you can log all you want as a Rhinelander, there are no Kusarians to log yeah. against you. Yeah. I was just so thinking... The Kusarians can come in force for battles, which is why we focused on events. Yeah, yeah. But your individual day-to-day -day activity is not really felt like a war. That's it's felt like a border conflict. True, that's the thing. Like, you can do as many events you want, but like, uh, in the end, the uh, regular actions are the ones that matter. Like, if you see people logging on normal days, like without events that's going to yeah. determine how and, and this is what i was saying the other day in the the public voice chat as well is that there's a lot of people shouting late, lately especially we hear this a lot yeah there's nothing to do that's why i'm not logging i'm not True. logging because there's nothing to do True. um <laughs> i would argue i am i'm a perfect example of sometimes if you just get online yeah. and do something yeah. i mean there have been times literally i had to i actually had to log off right now during the interview because i was sitting in orbit somewhere and a bunch of people came to roleplay with me <laughs> um, yeah, yeah, yeah. So but that, yeah. that's amazing, and and the, it just proves. I mean, I sat there for twenty minutes before the first one showed up, and if you've got the patience to sit someone for twenty minutes, someone will show up. Someone will show up. In game. True, true. But you can't, you can't turn that into we're going to declare war on faction A or Y because they're active or inactive, yeah. because you can't guarantee the individual participation. Um, yes. To make the wars, I think part of what made the Liberty War was so great is that you could just go to Texas. True. And chaos would erupt. Exactly, yeah. That's that true. was not true with the Kusari War. Yeah. The events were amazing. KNF gave us some truly brilliant fights, and one or two admittedly not brilliant fights. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we're still a little bit bitter about the Corsairs cloaking in on us during the event they weren't registered for. <laughs> nice. <laughs> yeah. yeah. But they, it's been, it's been, the events have been really good. The problem is, is, as soon as the event is over, there's no activity in that war. Yeah, I mean, like the most active is like ALG and the pirates, um, and they're not even part of it. <laughs> <laughs> I see. Yeah, no, I see. What you mean. I think that's where a lot of a complaint comes from. It's, yeah. it's especially for those people, and it's something like RM. I'm very aware of. We have log times. Yep. It's a very European-centric player group. The result of which is there are times when there simply are none online. Wait, we will occasionally take flack for that because someone will log in and go, Hey, RM, I, I made fun of you. Like Hemlock was saying, he sat in orbit for two hours <laughs> in London wow. with a overlord. Wow. Okay. Well, based on the time he was sitting there, there wouldn't be any RM on. So no response <laughs> can be expected. While it would be nice to always have someone to log on, etc., we don't, as a community, have the player numbers. I mean, there's 46 people currently online, and that's yeah. a good number for a Friday, to be honest. True, true, true. Well, yeah. Yeah, no, I see what you mean. It is, it is a bit. Well, I mean, now that you kind of agreed on the truths, and I'm gonna touch back on the Omicrons again. Uh, maybe possible cooperation with Kusari? Ever, ever thought of that? Because I mean, they have to. We Hoku. have, yeah. They have to Hoku, so it's like. Yeah. For a lot of the Rhineland military players, especially in the HC, um, Kusari in law represents a natural ally, not an enemy. True. It more sense for I... us to be allied than not, especially in regard to things like the Omicron, because we represent the barrier against the rest of Sirius. That's true. Into the Omicron, essentially. Our two houses together are the direct links into those true. spaces. Exactly. It makes sense for us to be fighting the nomads as the sort of leading force of humanity's defense. True. Also, I mean, just uh, judging by the past, I mean, stuff like 
I don't know if you remember in 4.85 you had this SRP Kusari battleship, remember Project Dragon or something? I don't, I don't yeah, remember. Yeah, I've seen what it was. that around, yeah. Yeah, it's, and so it, it looked kind of interesting, like Ryland working with Kusari. That was kind of cool, not them going against each other. That's just. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> and, and for us, like I said, it's, it's a natural ally thing. Yes, it's something exactly. we would like to explore long term, but obviously in the short term, we need to focus on getting the peace done. But I mean, every option has been discussed. I mean, even Kusari Rhineland versus GMG was discussed at one point. Yeah, yeah. You know, every, everything is possible, and yet nothing is. So, I think it's something we've definitely thought about. It's something we would like to do, but there isn't currently enough ten tangible stuff for me to say that's something we're going to do. It's something we're not going to do, yeah. because not least, it's something that Hubert and Pear are going to have to be a big part of. Yeah. So. I'm going to take one last question from the audience and it is from Reddish Red. As Velvet's oh, hey, second in charge, would Rhineland be open to working with Velvet? Well, my question would be, how do you even contact folks in the Omicrons? Like, wh what is your link? The core? Like, uh, In theory, but as it actually yeah. happened, we're already working with Velvet. I see. Um, <laughs> it's something we've actually already launched into, uh, and in our case, it was DHV, but it's the connection. Um, DHV has its base in Omicron. True. Um, we Delta. are currently working yeah. in contract with Core, OSI, IRG, Velvet, basically everyone working on the Velvet um, Freeport upgrade program. Yeah, yeah. Um, DHV is a part of that, and um, which we intend to leverage up because RS and DHV work with Core directly. Um, RS is in fact um, Core's only house um, contractor that is allowed to carry away the Iridium and Azurite. Ah, okay. okay. So they, they've got the they got the contract there, um, and we we work with RS to do the mining side of that um, and our interest in it. So our interest obviously is the Azurite, which will lead DHV at some point, if necessary, to scream help from the the Rhineland government. I see. Um, and, and part of that is obviously, again, the human defense front yep. idea. Yep. The Velvet are, in my opinion, a great faction, partly because they represent what Voners, in my opinion, should be if they fight nomads. Um, much more aggressive, still neutral, but much more aggressive and capable of dealing with the nomads. Yep. And we'd be really open to sending in fleets to help them engage the nomad threat. But that is something that needs to be dealt with both in and out of character with the relevant faction leaders. I see. Fortunately, Imo and I are pretty tight. So we can we can talk fairly easily about stuff like that. <laughs> true, true. <laughs> so okay, that was the last one from the uh, live audience. I'm gonna go to the uh, last one. This one is gonna be a little bit personal, banner because that was suggested by Rogue that I do the interviews a little bit more diverse, as in also getting to know you as a person right <laughs> Absolutely, like I but, said before, you may ask me anything you want there, will, there won't be like i'm not asking like oh Nothing what is that like a couple questions i don't i'm not happy answering i'll let you know <laughs> don't, don't worry about that just fire away sure it's just i mean it's just one question but it will require probably a longer answer so can you tell us about your history with discovery freelancer mod and your current views of the game itself the mod I, at all <laughs> i see what you, i see what you mean that is rather a longer question um, True. But my history with it is, is yeah a sort of interactive history is actually quite short um my first encounter of freelancer discovery was actually back in i want to say 09 late 08 09 mm. Um, yeah. I just lost. Uh, I just lost uh, my preferred multiplayer server. And um, <laughs> for those of you who remember, um, Freelancer by Night, which wow. was an absolute brutal. They basically deleted every system except Manhattan, and everyone just spammed missiles at each other. It was brilliant. <laughs> Dude, I I used to play in Joel UK, man. Fucking Freelancer. Oh, that was a good server. <laughs> yeah, man. <laughs> I love. I was oh, a shame that one went by by as yeah, well. Yeah, yeah. Really. But yeah, no, I, I first popped my head in then. Um, and at the time, to be honest, I, I wasn't massively impressed. Um, <laughs> there was, there was, don't get me wrong, there was a great deal of activity, but there were also a lot of other servers out there yeah. that were doing stuff. And at, the, at that time, I wasn't massively into roleplay. I see. Um, or at least not game based roleplay. Um, I come very much from a background of live action roleplay mm, okay. um, and tabletop roleplay. So for me, coming into disco, um, it was more a case of wanting to come and do something while I, I was not able to be out and about and doing other things. Mm. Um, and obviously, Freelancer, for me, Freelancer was literally one of only two games I ever pre-ordered. 
So it has a very special place in my heart. I replayed it every single year, yeah, pretty yeah. much without fail since it came out. Until, um, I want to say, Jan I don't know, June, June, June-ish last year, yeah. um, my save file corrupted. Um, <laughs> the save file I've had since 2003 um, was corrupted and I couldn't uh, recover it. Rip. Oh, and I, yeah, after a month and a half of sulking and not being able to play, I went, fuck it, there's got to be a server out there I can play on, there's got to be someone. I tried to find some of the old ones and they were all gone, and oh. um, at the time, um, I was searching around and Discovery came up and I went, oh yeah, I remember that. That wasn't too bad, I'll give it a, I'll give it a shot, <laughs> and decided to just leap in head first, sort of early December. I literally, I joined a shit ton of factions and just yeah. went mad doing stuff. I see. Um, in terms of my opinion of where we're at mod-wise, um, I think honestly, we can honestly very proudly say that Discovery is unique. There is really nothing like that, and there's never been anything quite like it. Yeah. Um, and that gives us an advantage that a lot of people don't have. Um, which is why, for example, I will occasionally be heard criticizing people who uh, come up with, I'm going to remake Freelancer again. Yeah. That's all well and good, but you're 10 years too late for that. And at this point, you're splitting the, one of the few existing communities. Yeah. And that's not to say there aren't problems. There are obviously problems. This yeah. End of Gallia event has shown us that there are a lot of development problems in, in how we implement things and mistakes being made. Yeah. Uh, server stability continues to be a massive issue. And I think yeah, if we could solve that issue, above all else, that would do a lot to bring people back in. Because we saw that in the Gallia event. We had 128 plus people online. Yep. I had in my chat people saying, I can't log, I can't log, it's already full. <laughs> I, I, I remember, yeah, yeah. People but every were PMing time. me too, what the fuck is going on. <laughs> exactly, but every yeah. single time the server was crashing down, and by the time we actually had a stable battle, about 100 of those people had left. Uh, oh, um, okay, yeah, we ended up with 86 people in game, and that was the real reason that the stability stayed. A lot of people just went, fuck this, and logged off. True, true. And I think if we could actually have battles like that, where we can rely on the server not to crash and die and burn, people would be less inclined to do that gut reaction, our oh, discovery is dead. True. Because that gut reaction that kills it, really. Nothing is dead. And I can say this from personal experience. I used to manage a LARP, live action roleplay. Yeah. When I first came in, it was dying. It had less than 20 people regularly attending. Ooh. It's now it's now more than 3,000 people, and it runs three times a year, and nobody has raised any complaints. So much so that I, I'm now completely hands-off for running it. it. It takes care of itself now. True. To me, that has always proved that if you can just take the attitude of, no, I'm going to do the thing, and that's what I say about people logging. Yep. If you just jump in game, things will happen. And the more people are in game, the more things will happen, and the less we'll be able to claim that the game is dead. The less people shout the game is dead, the less people will feel like the game is dead, the more likely they are to log in and do the exact thing that makes the game live. Well, the thing is, I see where you're heading at, and that's true, but I've, say, I've heard that argument a lot in the past. And uh, the thing, my thing is, uh, you got to consider freelancer discovery is in its Niche. core, let's say. <laughs> Let's be honest, it just takes a lot of time, especially for people that work. <laughs> you know? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And I think, I think like, to be honest, that's something where one ICs, we have a real big responsibility yeah. to make a 30 minute gaming slot, right? Because that is the average. You actually look at the server numbers. Most people don't log a single character for more than about 30 minutes at a time. Yeah. Power traders being a massive, obvious exception. Yeah, yeah. True. I True. think that a lot of that is. You can you can say you can say that obviously activity isn't going to self breed, but in many ways it does. And we have we do have a community here. We have a very niche community. We're all a bit weird. We're all a bit unusual. That gives Discovery Freelancer something that no other mod had. These and games like uh, the UK Yobs and and uh, uh, Freelancer by Night and all of those other mods, all of those hundreds of amazing mods. Yeah. Died is because in the end all they were about was playing a little bit of Freelancer and blowing someone up. True. Discovery with the RP element gives us the ability to add meaning and yep. meaning engage with people. And how many times have we seen people arguing bitterly over your faction doesn't deserve that mine does, etc. Pixel power. True. Because in the end, roleplay asks us to give a part of ourselves, to, to, to put a part of ourselves into the character and actually experience and enjoy and feel its miseries and True. therefore also its tension. So I, d I don't think it's so easy as to say it's one individual thing that we fix that and everything will go better. Yep. The fact is we're dealing with a game that is, what, 15 years old, based yeah. on code that is almost 30 years old, yeah. that isn't supported or protected and that we're 
we've, we've got amazing stuff. We're doing work um, free of charge. I think people are often forgetting. Yeah. Work that our mods and devs put in isn't paid. That's true. So the fact that we get such amazing assets, like the atmosphere in New London, is bloody mind blowing when you think about it. Yeah. No, I get it. I mean, obviously, but there's one thing that I want to point out too, and there is staff team tends to forget about the players too though i mean your no i mean your uh, argument is right like of, co of course you do it free of charge like no, no payment you receive no payment etc but the uh, players also invest a lot of time here like i i can remember i can remember just by uh, like three years ago when i was really active in sra right I remember I went late to work and shit. Like, like I, w I was only sleeping four hours a day and like, stuff like that. Like we yeah. were just I, I, must confess, I must confess to having a copy of the game installed on the work PC. <laughs> <laughs> wow! Well, see, off. see what I mean? No, but I mean uh, that's also a thing. So, like, when people write these RP stories, uh, in, in invest so much time in this game and in the end don't get anything well that's where back. i personally believe us as one i see and mm -hmm. and hv roles come in in a great way um, and i'm going to use dhv as a better example here yeah. because i have obviously the ability to just find something away there and right. Right. although i'm the one doing the interview for rm <laughs> uh, rm is actually honestly much more democratic than people think it is um, yeah. we vote on, a lot, on everything um, so it's very less, much less a dictatorial. Though I run DHC very much as a dictatorship. Yeah. Um, and there we, we, my job, as far as I'm concerned, as the one I see, is to enable other people in the faction who do not have the same level of commitment or time, yeah. and who don't want to spend hours digging through dev chats and mm -hmm. trying to work out what's going to be accepted and not. Mm -hmm. So not only am I interlink between the devs and whatnot, because I can take someone's RP project, take it to the devs, yeah. and go, hey, will this fly? Um, but also, we have, I think, a responsibility to make it possible and to be open to noobs coming in about how to use their time to get enjoyment out of the game. Yeah, yeah. Um, and this is something that a lot of people have said. I mean, the, the work that the Angels will do from time to time is absolutely amazing, but it's it's really not enough. It's it's, it's the same it's, reason why I pirate yeah. for jokes, for example, in Liberty. I will pirate a, a noob for a joke. <laughs> it just involves... Yeah, make me tell me a joke or I'm going to blow you up or laugh at my joke and then Google a really bad joke and make them laugh. True, true. Um, just because although it's no cost to them aside from a few minutes of their time, yeah, um, it's, it's integrating them into the community. And yeah, you're absolutely right. Devs forget that. Every dev. And having been um, a yeah. dev for other systems myself, it's very easy when you're writing a story yeah. to forget that there's much more to it than your vision. True. You can think, oh, it's so perfect like this, and, and yeah. that's the real danger. If you can, and I, to be honest, I don't want to talk shit, but Justin falls into this. He comes up with an idea he thinks is amazing, mm -hmm. and then he wishes to railroad it through, not always seeing that it's not as amazing for everyone else. Yeah, yeah, it's amazing. I agree. But you can't just tell a story for one person. Right? True. The GM's job is to tell a story for the group. Um, I think also, other, the, 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 I mean, we need to be yeah. mindful that we, as a community, are quite toxic sometimes. Yeah, and we yeah, have a reaction true. to say this is shit, this is broken, blah blah <laughs> blah. Shouldn't have bothered. True. When sometimes, it, yeah, mistakes were made. I mean, this New London, shit, tons of mistakes were made. Yeah. I mean, hell, that that base upgrade they did, they rendered it the wrong health, undockable, wrong model. <laughs> yeah, I things see. happen. But rather than shouting, oh, you're fucking shit, etc., we need to be mindful that they also have, have gotten very attached to that idea. And as humans, obviously, when you come up with an idea, your idea, it's your baby. You don't want to. You don't want to hear people criticize it um, and we need to all be more open to to that and to having a, i think a two-way communication that the devs don't forget that we're the people playing that, that game we're the ones True. that they have to entertain and that we shouldn't forget that the devs are trying to entertain us even when they're getting it wrong that's true that's true i mean there's there is a point here because the game like i said is, is really old and like we are the only ones left right so i mean we are the ones playing your game but so. new people are still coming in and that's, no, that's no, I mean, that's where we that's where we need to really grab is that we get hundreds of new people coming in i mean just spend a few days in in the eerie uh and you will see very quickly that there's probably a hundred new people a week actually signing up a and hundred, maybe one or two of them are staying okay a hundred that's the problem a, most people log in do one mining run and then give up i see what you mean yeah but I, I mean that's 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 what I, what I what i actually meant what i meant was 
uh, we as the community are your like you know only how should I say that like you know another developer just probably receive money for the game he did uh, people would go like as shit or it's nice yeah the so reward care. is yeah. for a dev is only self-fulfillment true yeah and so that's best received, honestly if you make the people happy yeah exactly so I'm saying like we, we are the ones uh, like we are the only ones left here in freelance discovery so like uh, don't don't um, exclude us you know what I mean just like yeah absolutely just because some people have bad mouth you know what I mean? <laughs> so but I think like, I think sometimes the fact that we think of ourselves as we're the we're the we're the lucky few we're the special few yeah, is part of the problem yeah, we really do that's... have a lot of people coming in um, I, I can't remember the exact post where it was. Um, I think it might have been one on Discord. But I think when Locken first became a GM, he was talking about the actual unique logins, yeah. and he was surprised about how many there actually were. Yeah. And I think that's something that we forget is actually there is a huge number of people coming in. Our problem is retention. Freelancer the problem is, is a game that speaks to people. It will always yeah. bring people. Discovery speaks to people. It will also always bring people. The problem is they get in and they have a few bad experiences. Exactly. That's and what. Nearly, and I'm not going to lie. My own story of that is when I first joined, I nearly yeah. quit one because I was smuggling and yeah. there was no RP. The Liberty Navy, you would simply use their dreadnoughts to blow me away without a word. <laughs> that is incredibly true, disheartening. True, and although true. it's something that's reduced in recent months, it's something that we as a community should always be looking for. We should always be thinking: Is that necessarily going to keep that person in? Is ignoring the person who doesn't role play Actually, very well a good idea? You know what? Now that you bring that up, I have to say something about uh, people that kind of defend the. Um, the meme the uh, fleets you know those, those russian guys and shit like they're like oh well but they bring a, they bring activity yeah, exactly <laughs> they bring activity right i'm just saying yeah but like how they have been treating players it's just do you really want that you know what i mean it's just they've been re rather they, they have been just no rp engaging or just doing the bare yeah. minimum and just when you know what I mean? So yeah, do you want those, to... it's one of those yes but no yeah, answers. Exactly. Because on the one hand, there's no questioning. They are generating activity. Yeah. People love to blow them up. That is activity. That's true. <laughs> but I will point. I mean, I, I'm again. This Fuka Squad is something that came up recently in the yeah. open chat. Yeah. I will point out the same thing there. Um, Rhineland solved their issue simply by fobbing them off onto the galleons. <laughs> right, we just FR5 them and send oh, them to okay. Gallia. Okay, I see. Because that. everyone was tired of it. Um, there's virtually no role play, and when it was extant, it was minimal, two line engagement. Exactly, or exactly, yeah. It was of a type that was nonsensical and edgy, um, that didn't really make sense in the wider law. So, none of that is particularly great to engage with to begin with. And the second element is they're not actually that good with their ships. I'm told they've gotten better with their MRG one. I can't <laughs> judge, I haven't seen them fight with them. Yeah. But I can tell you from having personally engaged many, many times in the weeks that they bothered hanging out in Ryan. Yeah, yeah. Having engaged them many times, they don't fight very well, but they complain a lot. <laughs> so, Reptile, for example, his I'm sure you remember his thread yeah. where he was complaining about the Donau not being a useful ship, despite oh, yeah. it being honestly one of the most OP ships in the game. True, <laughs> true. <laughs> Watch, yeah. I was in that fight. He never rolled once. He yeah. never fought to, to show me anything other than the side he always showed me the flat of his side to a nova bomber that's just <laughs> you can't then claim that it's bad um True. but then of course there's the attitude that they show out of character yeah um, exactly man for example yeah. um they hate rather uh, reinver they hate the rm yeah. um, and it dates back to one specific incident where it was one corsair legate mm -hmm. from indy um doing all right to be fair he was fighting all four of the suka squad yeah yeah and the suka squad demanded of the five RM caps hanging out nearby, deliberately staying out because we already get enough accusations of ganking. We don't yeah. need to actually gank to reinforce that. Right, right. So we sat out and he got incredibly angry at us, calling us unrealistic, he even took to the forums to say that we were unrealistic and not believable, etc. <laughs> and, and while he has a point, in, in real life, chances are you wouldn't give a pirate the mercy of fighting yeah, just four but... ships instead of nine. But it, there's a gameplay element, right? Exactly. You have to always accept the gameplay exactly. element. Um, the but then you though. join their group, you get messages like, I joined their group once and uh, got the message, I hope you're not one of those fair play players. What? <laughs> wow. For me, that was the moment. That was literally the moment when I went, I literally left the group and I went, you know what? Nope, I'm not nope. logging with them again. True, true. 
Fighting with them is not fun. Fighting against them is also not fun. The result of which is very quickly, they generate a burst of activity when they first go somewhere. When they first went to Gallia, massive burst of activity because everyone wanted to deal with them. True. Now, you just need to look at the BAF and MIG chats to see the attitude. Not True. logging for Suka Squad. True. I can't be asked to deal with Suka Squad. It's just Suka Squad again, etc. But in the long term actually reduces activity because people won't even bother being online because they are online yeah and because they all know that they will hunt them down regardless of rp relevance yeah because i mean fair enough that that's what they get out of the game they get pews out of the game that's clearly what they want and we need to be mindful of it there is a pvp element there is a pve there element, is, element. Yeah. there is and we yeah. we do need to be mindful i obviously fall on the rp side i believe that rp is the main reason the server survives and the main reason that it perpetuates itself. But we need to be mindful of people PvPing and PvEing also having fun, otherwise they leave. That's true. And we need everyone to be a part of a community. That's true. Um, and I think long but term the, the problem is... there is that they discourage people from being online yeah. and that reduces activity. But, but the thing is, you can't just rely on the community to show these guys, uh, you know, there, that there is something to do as PvPers. But um, as example, this has been brought up uh, a lot of times, which is conflict zones like New Hampshire and stuff. Why are there, aren't there more uh, zones like that? Which I mean, uh, zones are an interesting thing because in theory, yeah, they could the, generate activity. Exactly. But it's, it's the same as with the mining fields. Unless there's people already invest, invested in doing PvEP in that system, yeah. they have no reason to move from wherever they were doing it before. Yeah. So. I mean, that was a basic misunderstanding that the devs have about moving mining stuff. It's not the mining spot that generates the activity, it's the surrounding politics. Bearing was active because there were a bunch of factions that could play politics using the scrap. Yeah. And it's died in New York because there's nobody who cares. Right? Mm -hmm. Even the rogues don't hang out there because they've tried it once or twice and nobody's ever there, so why bother? But then kill that activity stone dead while also killing bearing activity, which, if you look at the player list, is once again dead. We used to average 10 plus players there at any time of day. <laughs> now, not so much. No, but part okay. of that wider problem is you can't just go, we're going to PvP or PvE everything. Yeah. Yeah, because we just do not have enough people to give them a fight that's whenever true. they want one. That's true, yeah, yeah. And really, that's where the issue is. They get bitchy and problematic out of character yeah. when they don't get what they what they see as their right in character. But they're not giving necessarily anyone else their right. I always think of it like this, right? In a roleplay, you are the other person's NPC. Yeah, you are the NPC who's playing the role to the True. other person. It's no. your role to play into that, and it's their role to play into yours. Exactly. They don't play into it, which means engaging with them doesn't lead anywhere other than shooting them, True. which you can do in con. Yeah, pretty much, right? Yeah, no, definitely. I see what you mean. And that's also where. I mean, he, he, the thing is, the fact that he takes to the forum immediately and says <laughs> things like, Dawn Hour is bad and you're all terrible people, or my fa one of my favorite posts on him, if we change the game completely so that it's the way he wants it, he will bring a hundred players in. Right. right. First of all, there's no evidence of that. He's never logged more than five people. Wow. So five people is probably what he brings to the game. Yeah. And secondly, the cost of losing all of the role players yeah. would kill the game just as dead. But I don't think he sees that there's a compromise to be made. True. And I think, to be honest, that's something as a community we're struggling with in general. That's we don't like compromising with people we perceive as our enemies in character. That's true, man. Yeah. Like also, also like admitting defeat and stuff. That's just, <laughs> you know, has been a big topic in our exactly. Time. I mean, nobody, there, nobody likes. Memes. Yeah. You've got memes. You know, we, we're always going to say things like uh, Angela Kusari and whatnot. You know, that memes help community grow together. But then on the other side of that, there's also you've got to be mindful of the reality of yeah. the situation. In that's no way reflect what you're memeing about. That's true. That's true. Because on the one hand, obviously, Kusari is the mortal on enemy. On the other hand, I'm more concerned about generating activity for Kusari so everyone can have fun. Exactly. Because yeah. we can't have fun if there's nobody on the other side. True. Yeah. <laughs> pretty much. Pretty much. Dude. And it's not like anyone. Can, it's not like you can buy a dinner or whatever was the pixel no. power. Yeah? <laughs> <laughs> At the end of the day, what I say in right, what I say goes in Rhineland. That yeah. doesn't help me in my real life at all. That's true. That is, that's <laughs> I think that's something people forget. <laughs> that's true. That's true. Okay, so, dude, I, I guess we have been through all. Yeah, we have been through all the questions. Yeah. So, unless anyone well, have any other questions? But, well, I'm gonna leave uh, like, let's say, a minute or five minutes for you to. Um, is there something you want to tell the community? Is there is there something? 
you want Remember to tell that newbies? Remember that all of Sirius is rightful Ryan and play, that's the most <laughs> important thing. True, true. Um, no, but, I mean, to be honest, if there's one thing I'd like to impart yeah. um, to everyone watching, especially I know from some of the questions, not everyone who has been watching is necessarily pro Rhineland, is yeah. please, God, reach out to me. Um, I'm not, and, and despite all the memes, X is not, and Tim is not. We're not opposed to working with people who even have been traditional enemies out of character. Um, there's no secrets about the RHA, RM problem, and it's something that we would actually really love to overcome. But the yeah. truth is, we do not know how without both sides willing to cooperate. True. I'm Absolutely. willing to talk about it, so if there's something anyone wants to talk about it, always feel free to come to me. My Discord box is always open. That would be the main thing. Yeah, yeah, I see what you mean. Can you also point people out, like if they want to uh, join the RM, like where can they find you, like the uh, forum? On the forum. Um, on the forum, if you scroll down into the official faction sections, um, you'll see Rhineland, you'll see it right at the top, right under the Rhineland government, you'll see RM. Um, there's a recruitment thread in there. Um, it's fairly straightforward to fill out, like most of them nowadays, they're not really, you know, any huge, huge big deal. Um, generally ping me if you've applied, because I, I check that one relatively irregularly, and forum stuff is mostly my responsibility these days. Yep. <laughs> Good. 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 Other than that, yeah, I mean, anyone who wants to join, join. Anyone who doesn't, doesn't. <laughs> you do you, man. Um, yeah, I mean, yeah, no, at the end of the day, the beautiful thing about roleplay is, is a lot of, let's be honest, weird and wonderful people. True. Um, we're all a bit fucked up. We're all a bit true. messed up in the head somewhere. <laughs> that's true. Well, I mean, we're playing a 15-year-old roleplay space game. Yeah. There's clearly something wrong. <laughs> yeah, man, that's true. Um, that's true. But that, more than anything, to me, says that we need to... We need to reach out and find a commonality yeah. because the fact that we're all clearly a bit weird let's be weird together true man i mean after all we are like the only ones left in this uh you know playing this game like you said exactly. <laughs> so like let's play together and not against each other you know what I mean? so it's like, exactly and i think yeah. biggest issue that the discord com sorry the discovery community yeah. has in that regard is that we very much differentiate between a faction on discord and a faction in game yeah um it's very easy to fall into a loop of hate. Everyone loves to hate on the RM, for example, and the RM loves to hate on the RHA, but can't really overcome it unless we all sort of work on it. And realistically, if we want the game to survive, we need to be able to interact with each other. That's true. That's true. Well, Bannon, thank you so much for uh, joining, dude. Not uh, at all. I'm very happy to do so. Anytime. I'll see you. With See you for a raid Sunday. For, for a raid, exactly. <laughs> the re the <laughs> well, I was gonna PG on Sunday if you wanted to join me. <laughs> sure, sure. Thank you so much for watching. Um, now let's see who 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 did we have? Uh, we had we I we had Velvet. Now we have Ryan Military, right? Uh, with Banner and uh, let's. I actually have a plan with these guys because um, I also want to have KNF uh, leader interviewed. And since I saw Rogue's um, responses, as in uh, on on the comment section, he said, "Could you make these interviews a little bit more interesting, diverse, as in um, like you know." this personal question right uh what's your experience with this community what's you know what do you think about this this etc or like um how could we change whatever xyz's factions relationship uh and what are his thoughts with the other facts so i'm thinking what if at some point we could just um also i just realized what the fuck my name uh, uh, at some point, we could just maybe invite two of the factions leaders and uh, have them talk about the future of those two houses and their relationships. That would actually be really interesting. But we'll see if I will do that. But uh, anyhow, so much for Rhino Military, guys. If you want, like uh, Bannon already said, if you want to join them, if you want to see their lore, background, story, whatever, you can go on their forums, Discovery, GC. And check them on official factions right in the military and uh if you want to join join them leave them a feedback uh give these guys a a hug <laughs> if you want to interact with them so uh thank you guys so much for watching i'll see you on the next interview